Jason. All right, we are inside of 100 hours until the polls open. A little while after that, the polls close. This is such an exciting time for people who love democracy. This is like your prime intellectual Viagra moment. That's what... <laughs> Actually, it's 100 hours, so you're gonna probably want the yellow pill, not the blue pill. Regardless, <laughs> there are so many twists and so many turns, it's like a soap opera, but with Canadian accents, eh? So let's go to the election! Hand the votes one more time with feeling. All right. All right. I, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna get all a little sniffy when, uh, when the election is over. I know we're gonna have the results and it'll be a new country or the same country or whatever the country's gonna be, but the energy of the campaign will be gone. And they've been so exciting, haven't they? <laughs> they've said such interesting things. You know, when this whole thing began, it looked like the order would be something like this. This is what we thought it was going to be. It's pretty basic, right? We got Harper's going to win. Uh, we know that. Nikki's going to come in second. Jill's probably going to finish third. Then you got a Jack, and then you got Liz May in the Green Party. That was the whole thing. The only big question that was happening when it came to this campaign, certainly when it kicked off, was how big would Stephen Harper's majority be? Would he win a minority, or would it be a big majority? It was like, in fact, he was so far ahead in the race. <laughs> it was crazy. Wait, it was crazy, right? But all of a sudden, this runaway got weird it started to slow down a bit, almost as if his jet didn't have an engine in it, right? And so, you know, you got, see, we knew this guy was gonna be second, we know this guy was gonna be third, but they're just moving along, blah, 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 and suddenly, this guy, what happened? <laughs> all of a sudden, Jack, or as we like to call him, the man with the stash, starts gaining all kinds of steam, and then goes to Quebec, a place that is impossible to win, and he starts to pass Gilles Duceppe. But Gilles, didn't even, Gilles all of a sudden, he wants to run his own race, right? So he's kind of over here anyway. <laughs> So it doesn't really matter to him what happens here because he's probably just going to get into provincial politics anyway and force a referendum on all of us. But one thing about that that'll be exciting is it'll just show us how damn good Peter Mansbridge is when he hosts election specials and referendum specials. That's one thing, right? But Leighton, by the way, this is fine. Okay, so one, two, three, weird. Maybe this will be like that. But what the <laughs> It's like... All of a sudden, Leighton slips past Iggy in some of the polls, and somehow, Jack Leighton, let me say that again, but slower, so we go with Jack Leighton is somehow in the race to be the leader of the official opposition. This is the crazy thing. So you look at these four parties. There was one other person that was supposed to be running. Who was it? Are you... Where is this person I... Oh. Here's the thing. Elizabeth May could have been over here doing triple jumps impressively, ha have, a, have a performance that was better than Patrick Chan's and nobody was paying attention to it, right? Because they were dealing with this. Holy Lord, what's happening over here? So now you have Iggy and Jack fighting for second place. Joe, by the way, is doing currently about as well as I used to do in track meets, and I didn't win those, by the way. <laughs> Stephen Harper, the incumbent, doesn't seem to have as big a lead as he once did, so it's a tight race. How will it end up? Well, who knows? So let's look at the issues that are facing the leaders in the last day before the election. Uh, now, I gotta say, in the past week or so, you do feel like there's this gigantic orange cloud that's slowly starting to pre uh, spread across the country. And I don't mean because I've been hanging out with the MPs from the marijuana party. That's a... <laughs> That's a different one altogether. And look, I do read polls with a healthy chaser of skepticism, but by all accounts, the NDP is gaining some serious ground, and they're taking votes from the left, from the right, from the front, and from the back, and apparently becoming a major threat to the Bloc Québécois in Quebec. In fact, currently, the NDP are actually the leading Federalist Party in the province of Quebec. Nobody thought that could happen, and by nobody, I mean you, but I also mean me. <laughs> Once upon a time, a long time ago, like last month, Jack Layton was on our show. Here it is. You're not going to finish in the top two votes. Uh, I, I'm ruling out the premise of your question right there, George, because I think anything is possible. What did you know? <laughs> what did you know? Did he know something we didn't all know? I don't want to be the guy that didn't sign the Beatles because the guitar bands were on the way out. <laughs> this is crazy. Now, listen. Uh, there are some polls out there that say that the NDP may win as many as 100 seats. What's really important to keep in mind when it comes to polls and leader popularity and, and popularity of a particular party is they don't always translate into seats. We don't have that kind of democracy here, right? The majority of the people aren't represented for a lot of reasons, both good and for bad. Correlation does not always prove causality. No, we don't know how he's going to finish with seats. We know more people like him than we actually thought liked them. As for Stephen Harper, we talked about this when he was on our show. You may remember that. <laughs> Right. 
he was too busy avoiding questions. Uh, now, so what is the problem facing the other guys? If Jack's making his play, what are the problems facing the other people? Well, Stephen Harper has a big problem on his hands with a dossier of 500 controversial comments he's made out there, and that's gaining steam on gaining steam online. So when you you know, campaign with accountability for a few years, and then your quote, could that hurt him? We'll see. As for Mr. Ignatieff, his support is fading. He trucked out Jean Chrétien at a rally, which, by the way, for the Liberals, is desperate. Do you remember, this is the same Liberal Party that pushed Jean Chrétien out. They pushed him out. They ignored him. Now they need him. Do they? Well, actually, they do. Because, you know, Jean Chrétien would probably still be the Prime Minister. With the way the kind of popularity he had, but the way the polls are looking, Iggy's going to need more than just the little guy from Shawinigan. May I suggest you dig up Mackenzie King, hold a seance, and try to resurrect the Liberal Party? <laughs> because that's the, the polls are suggesting that the Liberals could lose seats, and it's a dark time for that party when they could look back at the Stefan Dion years as the good old days. <laughs> I am not, a, uh, I am not a, a member of the Liberal Party. I'm not a member of any of the parties that are currently running. I'm starting my own. No, I'm not. But can I just talk to the Liberals for a second? All the Liberals. Can, can, can you meet me on the big red cam for just a second over here? You guys treated Stefan Dion with no respect. And now look where you are. Okay, back to the nation. All right, just desserts. Back to the orange crush for just a second if we can. Jack's momentum is really all about the bloc's decline in Quebec. So Gilles Duzet has got something to deal with. Is he the problem? Well, he's part of it, but not all of it. Maybe sovereignty is simply not the priority for Quebecers right now. In fact, uh, Chantal Ibera, who is amazing, uh, was on the Nationals at Issue panel. She said something really interesting about that the other day. She said that the reason why, or one reason why the Quebecers are leaning towards the NDP is because it buys them time to think about their long-term future. And if the only options are hardcore separatists and hardcore federalists who just want to settle the Quebec debate for now and forever, they feel trapped and they'll take whoever lets them off the hook. And along comes Jack. And then there's Jack, who's open to Quebec's right to decide its own fate, and they're all like, uh, you know, I never really noticed how handsome he was. Maybe he is the guy for us. Even though Jack suggested he might reopen the constitutional debate at some point, he's still potentially viewed as safety. Anyway, hard times for Gilles Duceppe. And you think it's weird that the liberals are bringing out Jean Chrétien? Guess who Gilles Duceppe's bringing out? The guy they pushed out for racist and asshole comments. John Perizzo is back. That is some serious desperation. It's so bad I hear that Duceppe has now voluntarily released his long-form birth certificate just in case that helps. <laughs> so, what does it all mean? Well, we've gone from an election that no one seemed to want to one that could change Canada's political landscape. This could go down as being an historic and important election, and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I would rarely tell you what to do, except I'll tell you now. Go vote. That's your debrief. Canada votes one more time with feeling.